Pretty sure we know by now that the modern Republican Party is nothing more than a reactionary movement. They're a movement that really has no core ideals other than being against whatever the opposition party is in favor of. They're also the party of specifically white rural grievance, while at the same time upholding the systems that make the rich richer and the poor poor. So they're wholly against working people's interests, which is interesting because they call themselves the party of working class people. Uh, and yet they stand firm on the side of the donor class, more so than, than any other party. I mean, you know, I had the problems with the Democrats, you know, backing the donors a lot of the times as well. But while the Democrats may back the donors at least half the time, some of you might argue 70 to 90 percent of the time, the Republicans are 100 percent of the time with the donors normally. Uh, now, of course, in order to get the support of the working class, the Republican Party has to take on the mantle of the culture war, right? They're, so they're sort of the opposite of the social justice warriors, right? They're the, they're the social injustice warriors, if you want to call them that. And they are focused on cultural issues like keeping trans people, keeping trans women out, uh, out of bathrooms that they feel comfortable using or canceling tennis shoe companies uh, because, you know, not for not for abhorrent labor practices, you know, like a slave labor near near slave labor in China. Uh, but no, but for saying that they support black lives against police brutality. OK, and so if you've been following the de-evolution of the regressive right wing, which is what they are, it's pretty obvious to see that they stand pretty much for nothing more than the obsession of owning the libs. And some Republicans are starting to, to be honest about that. In fact, here you have Texas Republican congressional candidate Michael Wood. Uh, so now Michael Wood is talking to an ex-Republican. Uh, that's MSNBC's Nicole Wallace. Okay, uh, And he's going to explain uh, what the GOP has become. And even though he had admitted that he had voted for Donald Trump. Did you vote for Donald Trump in November? I did. He told more than 35,000 lies based on the Washington Post lie counter. Um, why did you vote for him? Well, I think I was in a I was in a difficult spot that a whole lot of conservatives were. And in retrospect, I was wondering, I wonder if I wasn't too myopic and too sort of small minded and focusing on judges or tax cuts or Israel. And uh, maybe I should have taken a step backwards and taken more seriously the, you know, what other people were saying about him, about the, uh, the would be autocrat and, um, and whatnot. I, I will say that after I voted for him, he immediately did everything he could to, uh, make me regret it leading up to January 6th and including the big lie. Well, I, I guess the, my only pushback is the big lie started well before Election Day. So I don't know if you voted early, but there was plenty of time to see where this was heading. He told his voters in North Carolina to vote not once but twice. He's the only person that actually tried to commit systematic voter fraud of a criminal nature. Um, he had some bizarre turns at the um, podium in a debate that any Republican would have been troubled by. I say that as someone who used to vote for Republicans. And then he let hundreds of thousands of people die from COVID. And, and I guess what I'm trying to get at is, were you the best example to the voters in your district of a pure sort of protest person to Donald Trump if you voted for him yourself just a few months ago? I don't know, but nobody else was standing up, so I ran. That's not a good answer. That's a pretty pissed poor answer. Let's be honest about that. Uh, I do actually like how Nicole Wallace, uh, you give her a little bit of credit, she is uh, putting him on the spot. Saying, why Why did you vote for him? Even though, you know, he's been putting out this message of massive voter fraud, and he's been doing and saying all the things that you say that you're against. And, you know, why Why would you still vote for him? And it really comes down to, to a pretty simple thing. Despite all the negative rhetoric, they still align on policy. 100%. They still want to give tax cuts to the rich and corporations. They still want to please their donors. That's all they really do. They also believe, at least, you know, in a lot of cases, that the Democrats are some communist cabal, right? The huge lefties like Joe Biden. It's That's insane. <laughs> Joe Biden's not a huge lefty. It's not even close. 
when you really compare democratic politicians to the rest of the world, they actually legislate pretty conservatively. Um, a lot of programs, for example, are heavily means tested. Uh, a lot of them, of course, uh, are paid for by, you know, tax increases, things like that. Uh, and then you also, I mean, I mean, you look at the things that they're proposing. Oh, my God, two trillion dollar infrastructure. Well, that's because we've let our infrastructure languish for so, so long that, yeah, it's going to be incredibly expensive to get us up to par. Again, remember, we live in a country where one of the major cities, uh, Flint, in Detroit, didn't have clean water for over eight years, at least. Okay? Uh, and so understand that in the context of the rest of the world, Joe Biden's incredibly moderate and, 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 and fairly conservative fiscally. Um, that said, right, we're, we're not getting sweeping changes like single payer, for example. Uh, we're, we're one of the few countries that guarantee, doesn't guarantee health care, child care, paid sick leave, things like that. That's not to say that there aren't Democrats that are working on that. But I'm saying right now, not enough of them are in favor of these uh, large sweeping changes. Uh, and so overall, our Overton window is pretty well skewed to the right by policies. Uh, and, and by the way, the policies that are supported by Donald Trump are generally the mainstream of the Republican Party. Uh, you know, say for uh, a few key differences, of course, uh, for example, trade. And for example, uh, Donald Trump's not necessarily a neocon. Okay. Uh, and so that said, the only problem that a lot of people, a lot of Republicans seem to have with Donald Trump is that he went full mask off. He blew the lid off what Republicans really were like, what they actually really wanted. Uh, and turns out what's under that mask ain't pretty. So you've got Liz Cheney out there, right? Uh, and, and by the way, don't rehabilitate Liz Cheney. Please don't. Uh, I, see, I see it happening already. Uh, first, the rehabilitation of George W. Bush. Now, the rehabilitation of, of Liz Cheney for actually agreeing on reality. Like, you see somebody that agrees with reality, like, oh, turns out Donald Trump uh, uh, wasn't correct when he said that uh, the deep state cabal of, uh, of, of satanic worshiping pedophile, uh, Democratic pedophiles uh, did not try to steal the election from me or did not actually steal the election from me. Uh, great, you're admitting the objective reality. Uh, you, you must be a liberal now. You know, it's it's ridiculous. And here's the thing. This guy and Liz Cheney are starting to push back on that uh, and others. But here's the thing. The base still loves Donald Trump. Over 90% approval rating. The rest of the country, however, and this explains why you've got some of the Republican establishment that continue to push back on Trumpism, uh, it's because that roughly two-thirds of the country, the rest of America, is horrified by what we see from Trumpism. So, and it turns out that if you want a political future, you can't win if you keep going down that road. Now, of course, I'm going to get to the part uh, where Woods, um, not Woods, but uh, uh, Mr. Wood, basically admits what the Republican Party really is. Yeah, I, I heard what the former president said, and I, I agree with him. I think that we are just a party of mm -hmm. grievance right now. I don't know what we stand for. We stand for owning the libs. We stand for we don't like baseball. We don't like Coke. We don't like NASCAR. We don't like Hollywood. We don't like academia. We don't like anything. We're just we're just a grievance party that that hates a good hunk of America. And then we call ourselves patriots and uh this is just a dead end we're not going to win elections that way and we're not going to sort of put in put into place the sort of conservative reforms we want that way and then you know at the fringes there's a real risk of political violence which keeps me up at night we saw that on january 6th and i hate to say it but yeah. it can get worse than that and um yeah we have we have a lot of work ahead of us 100 percent what he said right there it's what it's what i've been saying all along they don't stand for anything they stand for owning the libs they are a reactionary party so this guy is actually being refreshingly honest for a republican 
and not in like the well yes all we want to do is really just oppress black people oh did i say that out loud no this guy is actually like well you know uh turns out my party just wants to own the libs yeah not good uh can't win that way they actually got to stand for something but here's the thing about and, and the other thing that he doesn't get that I'm going to disagree with him on, if you talk about what conservative reforms he actually wants to make, well, it's going to come down to cutting government spending, which, of course, disproportionately impacts poor people, uh, and probably increasing defense and, of course, uh, outlawing abortion. So understand that that's, that's really what he talks about when it comes to uh, enacting actual reforms. They're going to cut taxes for corporations. Uh, they still believe in trickle down. Uh, and then again, abortion. And here's the thing about uh, abortion. If you're, if you're a personally pro-life person, well, then you should be in favor of trying to get rid of as much poverty as possible. Okay. You need to also, in addition to fighting poverty, uh, you also need to do actual sex education, not you know, uh, indoctrination or abstinence or only or things like that. No, that, that doesn't work. Um, you also need to guarantee access to birth control uh, as well. And so that would not only, all those different things, by the way, would work kind of hand in hand. Uh, but the biggest one, of course, would be the elimination of poverty, which would also have a gigantic impact in reducing the levels of crime. Uh, but see, again, Republicans... Their policies are antithetical to that uh, because generally as an ideology, they don't believe in taking care of the poor. Conservatism at its core is a, is a selfish ideology that doesn't really solve any of those actual problems. And so that said, uh, at least this guy seems to admit what we've already known, what we've already figured out. Uh, and so that the current GOP has, in my words, hit the end stage. We're, we're end stage Republicanism. Okay. Uh, and that is, of course, reactionary extremism based on nothing more than racist ideology and white grievance. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.